With more twists than a razor wire maze and a seriously eye-popping story, Saw X is a lot to take in. But don't get stuck in the worst trap of all, confusion. Here's the ending explained. Spoilers ahead. Trust me. You will want to remain alert. Most Saw movies are fairly straightforward. Bad people get caught by Jigsaw and put into horrific traps. Saw X follows the same basic formula, but it asks the audience to invest way more in its plot and characters. At the heart of the movie is John Kramer himself. He may have been the figure looming over every movie in the past, but this time around, he's the center of attention in a way he's never been before. The movie opens with John struggling to deal with his cancer treatment. He sees doctors and goes to support groups, but he refuses to really accept what's happening to him. John runs into a man named Henry who used to attend his support group but has now been miraculously cured. Henry tells John about the special illegal treatment he received from an experimental doctor, and John is sold. After doing some research online, John connects with Cecilia Peterson, the daughter of Henry's doctor. Cecilia tells John that she's continuing her father's work at a secret medical facility in Mexico City. John wastes no time going there, but a few days after his treatment, he figures out that Cecilia faked his surgery and stole his money. Enraged, John taps into his inner jigsaw and begins laying plans. With the help of a mysterious man on the phone, John finds the scammers. Amanda Young comes to Mexico to help John carry out his plans. They capture Valentina, Mateo, Gabriela, and Cecilia. While John and Amanda force everyone into their traps, another victim of the scam named Parker Sears shows up trying to get his money back. He's horrified by what he sees, but gets roped into John's games. Valentina and Mateo both die in their traps, but Gabriela manages to survive. As John is getting ready to prepare Cecilia for her trap, the movie's big twist happens. It turns out that Parker was working with Cecilia all along. The two of them capture John and Amanda, and Cecilia kills Gabriella herself. Then she captures a young boy from the fake clinic who befriended John, and she puts the two of them into John's final trap together. While John and the boy are basically drowning to death in blood, Cecilia and Parker search John's makeshift office for all the money from the scam. When they find it, the trap goes off. John and the boy are freed, but Cecilia and Parker are locked in the office while toxic gas fills the room. Cecilia murders Parker to fulfill the trap's game and save herself. The movie ends with John, Amanda, and the boy leaving Cecilia barely alive in the office. As both a sequel and a prequel, Saw X finds itself in a bit of a trap. Its story needed to fit between Saw and Saw 2, so the ending couldn't introduce any wild changes for the franchise as a whole. That doesn't necessarily mean that the entire story was pointless, though. The ending of the movie might actually have a big impact on how people view John Kramer and his serial killer persona. The events of Saw X prove yet again that John is fully committed to his demented moral code. His twisted mind doesn't view what he does as actually killing people. He really does think putting people in these horrible traps makes them atone for their sins. We all have free will. When Cecilia kills Gabriella, John is horrified because he genuinely views her murder as different from his trap. Her victim never got a choice. When Cecilia takes things a step further by threatening a child, John is outraged. Whereas Cecilia is a true sociopath who cares about no one but herself, John is apparently able to form real connections with people. The ending of Saw X tries to show us that John isn't exactly a monster. That might be hard to swallow after nearly two decades of Saw movies, but who's to say that psychotic killers can't also have hearts of gold? The first Saw introduced the world to John Kramer, and he'd already racked up a concerning amount of victims by the time that movie ended. Jigsaw's methods were already getting attention, as established by the wall of newspaper clippings Detective Tap had, but that doesn't necessarily mean that people all around the world would know who he was. We know that Jigsaw was a famous killer before the franchise had a chance to really get rolling. Near the end of Saw X, Cecilia spends some time gloating over the fact that she's now beat him twice, and her villainous monologue holds a little surprise. It turns out that Cecilia knows exactly who Jigsaw is. As a sociopath herself, Cecilia is a bit starstruck to be dealing with Jigsaw, and she's particularly delighted to have bested a famous serial killer. Maybe it isn't surprising that Jigsaw gained worldwide infamy so quickly. After all, there are hardly any other famed killers who use methods as specific and grotesque. Now, it's clear that John's reputation doesn't just help him acquire loyal acolytes, and also creates psychotic rivals for him to compete with. Henry is the man from John's support group who first told him about the secret cancer-curing treatment supposedly developed by Cecilia's father. After setting John on the course to Mexico City, Henry basically disappears from the movie. The back hour of the film is dedicated to John locking all the scam artists in gruesome traps, but Henry is nowhere to be seen. Only the most patient audience members get to find out what eventually happens to Henry. A man as smart as John Kramer isn't about to forget when someone has wronged him. A mid credit scene reveals that John circled back to Henry after returning to the United States. John is Henry trapped in the very same bathroom from the original Saw. Henry has a nasty-looking bladed device strapped to his body, but the scene cuts to black before his game gets underway. Unless it's a plot hole, however, remember that in Saw 2, which is chronologically after Saw X, the remains of Adam and Zepp are still in the bathroom. Maybe Henry made it out after all. 
You don't need to understand the entire Saw franchise timeline to follow what's happening in Saw X. A newcomer to the franchise could still enjoy the movie, though they might walk away with a few questions about how John's associates fit into the story. But even franchise superfans might have some questions about how Saw X factors into the larger timeline. Saw X is set between the events of Saw and Saw 2, but there are a few moments in the movie that seemingly confuse that chronology, but may actually have explanations. After getting this fake treatment, John is doodling in his notebook, working on a sketch of the rack from Saw 3, and because he scraps the drawing, it makes sense why the trap doesn't appear in the franchise right away. In the movie's mid credit scene, John is back in the room from Saw, and it does seem strange that he would return to a place that could potentially be considered an active crime scene by investigators. The actual explanation is that there is very little time between the events of Saw and Saw X, so John apparently still has his old workshops available to him. This movie happens weeks after the end of Saw 1. Saw X happens over the course of only a few days, and that might explain why this story from John's past has never been alluded to before now. It's a blip in his entire murderous timeline, although an eventful one. John wouldn't have been able to pull off his scheme in Mexico City without help. Amanda Young, one of John's acolytes, gets some time in the limelight, but John's other collaborator is a bit more mysterious. On multiple occasions throughout the film, John gets on the phone and asks someone on the other end to help him locate one of the scam artists. A man's voice replies, but it doesn't say much, and even the most hardcore Saw fans might not have recognized the character from the voice alone. The mid credits scene finally puts him on screen, and it turns out to be Hoffman, a man with whom longtime Saw fans are intimately familiar. Hoffman has had an extremely important role in the series. He's able to help John because he works for the police, and that also makes him an especially dangerous man to be a serial killer's loyal follower. The ending of Saw X shows us that Hoffman's history with John might go back even further than initially thought. Of all the men to cheat, you pick John Kramer? As far as the story is concerned, Saw X makes some revolutionary changes to the franchise's formula. Because it's set between the events of two previous movies, it really isn't able to tread much new ground, and doesn't do very much to set up yet another installment in the series. Technically, it already has a sequel in Saw 2. In fact, because the movie spends so much effort returning to the franchise's roots and exploring the inner mindset of John Kramer, it would actually make for a pretty great send-off to the entire series. Chances are good that Saw X won't be the end of the franchise, though. While the in-universe future of Saw may very much be a mystery, it's pretty clear that the franchise still has some life left in it. Upon release, Saw X is the best-reviewed movie in the entire series, and the first movie in the series to get a positive score on Rotten Tomatoes. That could mean Saw is turning a new leaf, and there could be a slew of critically successful movies yet to come. Ultimately, like everything else in the movie business, the future of Saw depends on how much money it can generate. If enough fans spend their hard-earned cash catching Saw X, you can be sure there'll be more Jigsaw to come.